Recent events have pushed the importance of logistics in warfare to the forefront, because no matter how fancy your maneuver forces are, if you don't support them, interesting things can happen. But logistics is kind of a black box. Somehow, oil taken from the ground somewhere along the way ends up in a tank. So in this episode, we're going to use the US Army as a case study to explain how fuel gets from a refinery to an armored column. This will be complicated, but at the end I'll be summarizing the whole process in like a minute. I'd also like to thank the Froggy Logi on Instagram for giving my script the once over to make sure I'm not talking out my ass. Link to his page in the description. First, let's entertain the hypothetical that the US is engaged in simultaneous combat operations in Poland and Turkey. We're looking to fuel up a deployed combined arms battalion a heavy unit with tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, and about 400 to 500 soldiers. It all starts with an obscure Department of Defense branch called the Defense Logistics Agency, or DLA. This office is responsible for procuring a variety of critical goods for the military, from MREs to aircraft parts. Through its sub-office DLA Energy, the agency buys all manner of fuel from suppliers and the service branches reimburse them for what they order. As of 2021, the Air Force was by far the largest consumer of petroleum and aerospace energy, purchasing $4.5 billion in fuel. The Navy was the second largest at $2.7 billion, followed by the Army at $780 million, and the Marine Corps at $31 million. For our scenario, DLA Energy supports the European region via its Europe and Africa office based in Germany. Downstream, logistics is split up by combatant commands. The US has six geographically based combatant commands that are responsible for all military forces in their areas of responsibility. In the case of war in Europe, the relevant one would be US European Command or UCOM. UCOM has an associated army service component called US Army Europe and Africa. The army is legally responsible for managing overland petroleum supply to all US ground forces regardless of branch, in addition to coalition partners. The army's service component reviews the fuel requests of its logistics commands. It then forwards these requests to UCOM's Joint Petroleum Office, or JPO, which validates them and places the actual orders from DLA. Ideally, DLA Energy will try to procure fuel within theater from a host nation. Sourcing fuel from Kuwait's commercial refineries for forces operating in Iraq is a direct example. Failing this, and if there are no pre-positioned stocks of fuel or pre-established fuel terminals in the area of operations, DLA might have to coordinate a mass sea lift of fuel. Sea lift is the most cost-efficient way of moving loads of fuel around the world, but it's also relatively slow, taking weeks to get fuel in theater. This would be executed by the Military Sea Lift Command, or MSC. When they arrive in a new theater, the fuel tankers offload into the offshore petroleum discharge system, which includes an auxiliary ship and an onshore beach terminal unit, or BTU. In undeveloped theaters lacking port infrastructure, the two are connected via a mooring buoy and up to 8 miles of flexible hose line. Once fuel is on the output side of the BTU, the Army takes over responsibility for moving the fuel. In the case of Europe, there is a significant amount of NATO infrastructure already on the continent for delivering fuel from storage depots to the front, a byproduct of the Cold War. This includes the NATO pipeline system spanning Europe, comprising 10,000 kilometers of pipe and a storage capacity of nearly 1.1 billion gallons of fuel and lubricants. However, if infrastructure is lacking, the army can lay its own pipe. Large, permanent pipelines are the most efficient overland means of transporting fuel. Rail is also an option for bulk petroleum, but both options lack flexibility for lower level distribution, which is made up for by vehicles and temporary pipelines. By contrast, in particularly austere and remote environments, the Air Force might be required to airlift fuel into theater. For example, if an airborne force has seized an airfield far away from the more capable fuel facilities. As another example, the Marine Corps has its tactical bulk fuel delivery system mounted in CH-53 helicopters for delivering up to 2,400 gallons of fuel directly to forward combat vehicles. The body that plans and controls a theater's fuel supply is the Army's Theater Sustainment Command, or TSC. This is the ultimate Army Logistics Command in a given region and controls all of the Army's logistics from the division level and up. 
For operations in Europe, this would fall on the 21st Theater Sustainment Command. Because in our hypothetical, the army is fighting in Poland and Turkey at the same time, very different environments that are far away from each other, the Theater Sustainment Command would likely deploy smaller expeditionary sustainment commands to more closely control logistics in each area. These ESCs are essentially extensions of the Theater Sustainment Commands that manage all logistics in their smaller area of operations. So while the Theater Command will operate fuel distribution in the entire Europe and Africa region, separate expeditionary commands will handle it in Turkey and Poland respectively. Under these sustainment commands are sustainment brigades, engineers, and other attached units who have the actual capabilities necessary to store, move, and distribute fuel. In other words, the units that actually get the job done. Sustainment Brigades are essentially flexible HQs that can control various logistics units tailored to a specific operation. They're subordinate to the higher sustainment commands, even if they're organic to a maneuver unit. This is because the synchronization of logistics efforts go beyond just the division. Thus, divisional sustainment brigades are commanded by sustainment commands, but support their division. Sustainment brigades can include pretty substantial fuel distribution and storage units. One type is a Petroleum Support Battalion, which actually sets up fuel distribution networks. Each battalion can operate 375 miles of fuel pipeline, fuel terminals, and a network of medium trucks for dispersed deliveries. If staging is possible before large-scale conflict, they can arrive in theater before combat troops to start setting up fuel storage and pipelines. As a real-world example, this was done five months before the 2003 invasion of Iraq. When combat units are in theater, sustainment brigades and their fuel units push fuel to the supported brigade combat teams, who have their own limited fuel distribution assets. They do this via fuel system supply points or FSSPs, which are based on large collapsible fuel bladders. A composite supply company attached to a division sustainment brigade has a petroleum platoon that can store and distribute 540 gallons of fuel per day. At most, it can set up two 120,000 gallon FSSPs and one 300,000 gallon FSSP supporting up to three brigade combat teams or other units moving through the division's area. It's also capable of delivering up to 125,000 gallons of fuel per day directly to units via fuel trucks and fuel tanker trailers. While trucks are probably the least efficient means of transporting fuel, they provide flexibility as they can move more or less anywhere roads permitting and don't require construction. Petroleum units that serve all units in a larger area, such as the Petroleum Support Company, have even larger capabilities, with fuel supply points of up to 840 gallons using four 210 gallon collapsible tanks. Ideally, these fuel supply points at division level or higher would handle rear area refueling, allowing fuel units at brigade and below to provide tactical refueling closer to engagements. Each brigade combat team has a brigade support battalion or BSB, which includes a distribution company, including fuel tankers for receiving fuel from sustainment brigades. How many tankers they have depends on the brigade type, as different vehicles have different fuel requirements. The heavier tracked vehicles of the armored brigades are undoubtedly the most gas guzzling. It's expected that an armored BCT could consume a maximum of 100,000 gallons of fuel a day in combat, compared to 39,000 gallons per day for striker brigades and 26,000 gallons per day for infantry brigades. But they pale in comparison to heavy combat aviation brigades, which can consume up to 142,000 gallons of fuel per day. Hemet tankers and tank rack modules are the main means of tactical fuel distribution. Doctrinally, armored brigades are meant to have 18 Hemet tankers in their BSB. Striker brigades are meant to have 10, and infantry brigades are meant to have 5. The brigade combat teams don't have static fuel storage like the fuel supply points and less reinforced. Rather, they use PLS rack modules called modular fuel systems to mass distribute fuel. Maneuver Brigade tankers take fuel down to forward support companies or FSCs which directly support each combat battalion. When they arrive in the combat battalion's rear, supplies are broken into logistics packages for specific companies. They travel on to logistics release points or LRPs where the leader of the company trains, picks them up, and takes them to resupply their companies on the front. 
For combined arms battalions, forward support companies include six Hemet heavy tankers that can provide immediate tactical refueling to their companies. They can provide 30,000 gallons of fuel in one lift. For reference, it takes about 7,000 gallons to top up a company of Abrams, and 2,500 gallons to top up a company of Bradley's. The battalion as a whole could consume a maximum of 26,000 gallons a day back when it had four maneuver companies and the headquarters. No data on it now that they only have three companies. So the forward support companies probably have a little more than a day's worth of fuel when the battalion is going balls to the wall, and a little more than two days worth on average. To give a simplified example of how vehicles may be refueled in combat, refueling points are typically located behind or between fighting positions in the company rear area. A single Hemet tanker can refuel multiple vehicles at once. In this case, three Hemet tankers are each refueling four Bradley fighting vehicles who are waiting on the fueling line. In combat or on the march, time is of the essence, so fuel issue is usually timed to give a predetermined amount of fuel rather than filling them to the brim. Additional Bradleys await their turn in the marshalling area, while a platoon of tanks provides security for the site. Alternatively, if horizontal space is an issue, the fueling line can be oriented hamburger style, with vehicles on either side of the tanker. At an even lower level than this, individual vehicles can carry 5 gallon jerry cans for hasty and independent refueling. This can be useful for wheeled utility vehicles with smaller fuel tanks, but it really isn't a primary fuel option for an M1 Abrams in its 500 gallon tank. So, to distill the entire process in the context of our hypothetical European conflict, the Theater Sustainment Command and their subordinate Expeditionary Sustainment Commands plan their theater's fuel distribution and make requests to U.S. Army Europe and Africa. The Army Command for the region signs off on their request and forwards it to UCOM, the overall Armed Forces Command for Europe whose Joint Petroleum Office validates it and places an order to the civilian DLA Energy. DLA Energy then releases stored bulk fuel that's purchased from suppliers to the Theater Sustainment Command. Once there, Petroleum Units subordinate to the Sustainment Brigades receive it, store it, and distribute it to units. For fuel received via sea lift, it's transferred onshore via beach terminal units, and is then transferred by pipeline to tactical petroleum terminals, which can store millions of gallons. From here, fuel is transferred by pipe to fuel system supply points. There, sustainment brigades offload the fuel onto maneuver brigade and division support battalions. Brigade support battalions offload their fuel onto forward support companies, and forward support companies gas up their supported maneuver battalions. A fairly complex process to be sure, but very important for conducting warfare at any scale. I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters for protecting Battle Order from the whims of the advertisers. Consider joining them at the link in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, check out this animated battle report on Operation Serval, France's maneuver war in Mali that pushed its logistics capabilities to their limit. We'll see you over there.